this workshop I was looking at the art of music making, so looking at experimental music and various artists that look at sound art. I was looking at this book called Background Noise by Brandon LaBelle, just as some kind of contextual research within sound art, and it was quite interested in talking about the actual oral qualities of sound, saying how it's relational and it's different abilities to travel through different bodies, so a sound that you'd hear would then travel through to your ears and the acoustic sounds would change depending to which person it would travel to and how the different sounds can vibrate and how other sounds can harmonise but then you can also have traumatising sounds or ugly sounds or aggressive sounds and it was talking about specific sound art practices and how that role specifically is able to harness and analyse and interrogate the actual condition of sound. And also it talked a lot about the idea of sound and space and how they both have quite a relational quality. It spoke about the spatiality of sound, so how sound is really intertwined with the space that it's played in, so if you were to place a sound within different contexts and environments, you'd see it differently. So also how if you were to place it um, kind of pushed away into a corner, the actual acoustics would be different than if it would be played in like an open room. And also it was looking at how to separate sound and music, so it was talking about how sound is more of a found phenomenon which you kind of come across and occur which then can be manipulated further but whereas music is more of a cultural production so it's something which is made and made for the purpose of culture and one of the first artists that I was looking at is G. Lucas Crane he also goes by his stage name of Non Horse and He's basically um, a New York City based sound performer and artist and he has this quite unique sonic approach to how he makes sound and he uses a combination of digital technologies as well as kind of um, retro technologies such as cassettes and mixes kind of taking inspiration from classic DJ setups and things like that and he describes how he kind of appropriates music as well as field recordings. So I'll just play a section of that for you. So you can see by that that it's a very chaotic and messy array of different sounds. You can hear some like small segments and samples of speech or music and then quite digital glitches as well. And he um, refers to how he, he seeks to um, sample and recontextualize found information that he's come across. And he even talks about how his music's like anti-brainwashing Cure, so it's kind of a bit of a critique of the overconsumption of imagery. One of the next artists as well that I've been looking at is a group called Sounds Queer, which is basically um, a Vienna-based collective and um, who look at electronic music sound art, but they're also very based upon queer activism. So they describe how they use synthesizers as 
a feminist spaceship. So they use it basically to conduct lots of these workshops, which explores how to gain representation through music and sound making, and also just questions this notion of what a queer sound is, with it being kind of abnormal, anti-establishment, kind of peculiar or strange. And one of these artists that run this activist group is Zosia, and she combines field recordings with electronic synths, and these create, again, these kind of strange and weird sound atmospheres. So I've just got a short section of it which I can play for you. That kind of soundscape is more kind of atmospheric, but it takes samples from these more atmospheric synths as well as field recordings of these kind of odd glitching out of place sounds, which all combine to kind of try and create this spatial landscape of sound as well. So I just wanted to do a brief recap of one of the last workshops that we did, which was looking at making graphic notations so, just um, looking over it again, one of the ways to traditionally represent music would be through the five-line musical stave with different notes representing like, the different keys, but then these graphic notations, like these examples, um, kind of show a more um, unique and dynamic way of demonstrating them, and they can make use of different symbols as well as text writing or collage, and that basically enables art, like performers and musicians to read that and approach it in a more different way. So different people would have their own interpretation of it and be able to create their own sound. And in the last workshop, we basically um, made our own graphic scores based on a soundscape. What one of the activities could be is um, see how you can make your own kind of queer soundscape. And I found this app called um, Ethersurface, where basically you can produce different sounds of synthesizers or theremins. And you could see what kind of different sounds that you produce, as well as experimenting with the different pitches or speeds and patterns. And you can also try and base those sounds from the graphic notations that you drew.